one of the primary function of the tooth enum okay, is to isolate these microorganisms from the underlining dentin and the pulp complex. So as long as enamel and cementum are intact, the pulp and the root canal are protected from invasion. But loss of these structures by caries, trauma, cracks, okay, opens an avenue for penetration of the bacteria through the dentinal tubules. And these cases, yeah. So the direct pulp exposure can be caused by caries, trauma, restorative procedures, scaling, root planning, because I will affect the cementum, attrition, abrasion, naturally absent enamel, and that can happen, and congenital anomalies. Here are the cases where the crack and caries and, and the attrition, abrasion, it's all present. All are, all are causes for the pulp. What type of bacteria will be there in the carious lesion? In the carious lesion, I should expect a gram-positive bacteria and a gram-negative bacteria. Okay, an anaerobic gram-negative and gram-positive non-sporulating roads, actinomyces, streptococci are expected, lactobacilli, the dentine tubules that passes through the full length or width of the dentine, they have a variable diameter and the presence anyhow the diameter if it is if it was uh, at the pulpal side or if it was at the enamel side at the dentine enamel junction all of it it permits the passage of the bacteria So the, the bacterial invasion, the internal tubule, occur rapidly, especially with a non-vital pulp. While with a vital pulp, it has its defense mechanism. One of them is the presence of the odontoplast process inside the dentinal tubules, the presence of the fluid that uh, have an outward direction of movement, the presence of the uh, lamina limitants that lines the tubules, other factors that these toxins okay, from the bacteria, they are always in advance of the presence of the bacteria. So they will simulate the formation of dentinal sclerosis beneath the carious lesion, tertiary dentine formation, okay, presence of the of smear layer is also a barrier. Intertubular deposition of fibrinogen also reduce dentine permeability. In addition to the host defense molecules such as antibodies and component of the complement system which is also present in the dentine. As long as the pulp vital, the dentinal exposure does not represent a big problem for us. Okay. Any pulpal infection within the vital pulp, if it is not deep enough, we can remove the cause, we can treat the remaining part, and everything will be fine. When the dentine thickness, I mean the remnant healthy dentine, is thin enough, okay, that will alter the permeability of the dentine, or to, I mean it will increase so that the bacteria can invade the pulp that is another story that's why when we remove the caries the layer the layer of the remnant healthy dentine is very important once it is less than 0.5 to 0.2 million means that the pulp is in danger they will that means that the bacteria can uh, invade the pulp repeat cell division and pushes cells in the tubules. The bacterial cell may also be forced by hydrostatic pressure developed from on the dentine during mastication. 
So bacteria inside tubules and their deep caries lesion can reach the pulp even before frank pulpal exposure. Okay. Some says that the pulp will not be affected since the pulp is vital, but that depends on the number of the bacteria, because a few number of bacteria, if they invade a pulp, they might not be significant, especially when the immune response and when the pulp is vital and the and the uh, blood supply is efficient, just uh, elimination, removal of the bacteria treating the pulp, as we mentioned several time ago, several time before, it will be fine and everything can be subsided. While if the vitality of the pulp is compromised, which means that the defense mechanism are impaired, and that's due to the uh, to the fact that when there is an um, non-vital pulp, means there is no blood supply. Okay? In such a case, a bacteria can invade, cause the direct exposure of the dental pulp to the oral cavity is the most obvious truth for endodontic infection. Caries can be a cause for pulp exposure, but bacteria may also reach the pulp via direct exposure uh, during operative procedure, during drilling, okay, and uh, cause some pathologic changes, especially when the microorganism can reach the pulp. That is why an isolation in operative is important. Theoretically, this microorganism can be transported to the blood, to the lymph, okay, and cause um, unimaginable tissue damage, okay, where they leave the vessel, enter the damaged tissue, and establish an infection. The microbial penetration to the canal treatment schedule can occur, which means even during endodontic treatment, I expect a spread of infection, and in infection if I use uh, during the treatment, if my tools were not clean enough, my isolation was not clean enough, okay, between appointments can happen, and even after root canal treatment. It is an infection. We have to remember always that we have one purpose in the endodontic treatment is to eradicate the occurring infection to prevent the microbes from infecting the root canal or the periradicular area. So the endodontic infection can happen because of a pulpal necrosis or that I mean the pulpal, the untreated pulpal necrosis, and cases in which the pulp was removed for a treatment. An apical periodontitis is an inflammatory disease of microbial origin caused by infection of the root canal. The bacteria are the major factor, okay, and the apical periodontitis develop. It's a fight between the, the between the host defense mechanism and the virulence of the bacteria. After the death of the pulp, the host defense mechanism will be lost. Even the blood supply will be lost. So the bacteria will form uh, the biofilm inside the canal, which results in a damage in the preapical area. Periodontal disease. The microbes in the subgingival biofilm reach the pulp through the dentinal tubules and the lateral apical or forcation canal. I mean the biofilm in the subgingival area. And to differentiate between the two cases, the pulp necrosis due to the periodontal disease, they develop when the periodontal pocket to reaches the apical foramen or one of the lateral or bifurcation canals. Okay, they can cause a damage to the vessels penetrating through 
the apical foramen. The main cause of microbes introduced into the canal during the treatment could be caries, remnant of dental biofilm, like here, under caries, caries of the tooth crown leaking in the rubber dam during our work or contamination of endodontic instruments like irrigants or the tools as here not sterilized. The microorganism can also enter the root canal in between appointments. Okay, and that may be a temporary filling restoration has a crack or it was removed accidentally some fracture had happened in the crown or the tooth left open for a drink. The microorganism can penetrate through to the root canal even after the, com the completion of the treatment. Maybe fracture in the temporary restoration or the permanent restoration of fracture in the tooth itself, some uh, underneath and others. The micro biota of endodontic infection can be classified to extraradicular infection and intraradicular infection and we have a primary secondary and persistent infection you have to remember one thing that the microorganisms they are different according to the stage of the infection whenever you are near the coronal part you can you can find aerobic and non-aerobic while whenever you go too deep they will be obligated non-aerobic bacteria and in short just that you don't mix your information I the lecture was about bacterial invasion inside the canal could be can be introduced into the canal either through caries through restoration also uh, infection in the periodontal area can help in invading the bacteria to the root canal so the microbiota of the endodontic we said we have extra radicular we have intra radicular and they could be primary secondary and persistent type the primary it is really it is the the bacteria or the microorganism that they are initially invade and colonize in the necrotic pulp tissue okay the secondary they are caused by microorganism not to pres they were not to present in the primary infection but they were introduced maybe through our instruments they were introduced into the canal there is some Persistent infection, which is the third type. This type of infection is there even if we did uh, obturation to the canal. The intraradicular microbiology, they are inside the canal. So they are there due to a pulp necrosis. So when there is a pulp necrosis, the odontoplastic process, they will autolyze. When they autolyze, there will be a dead tract, which means that the dentinal tubules are more open and the dentine is more permeable. So this will help in the transverse of the microorganism. So the pulp will lose its blood supply, which means that the immunity will be less and more bacteria will be introduced. We have the highest accumulation of microorganism in the body. Okay, they might reach 100 billions of bacterial cells in the oral cavity. More than 1,000 bacterial species are there in the oral cavity. So the endodontic infection developed in previously is trial place that does not contain normal microbiota. Any species found has the potential to be an endodontic pathogen or at least play a role in the ecology of the endodontic microbial community. So if we come to the primary intraradicular infection, primary infection characterized by mixed 
presence of a mixed species. Okay. Mostly the conceptually dominated by anaerobic bacteria. Number of the bacteria inside the infected root canal vary from 1,000 1, to 10 to the power 8 per root canal, while with a mean of 10 to 20 species per infected canal. number of bacteria affect the virulence of the bacteria. The size of the apical periodontitis lesion has been shown to be proportional to number of the bacterial species and cells in the root canal. Okay. Number of taxa per canal. Taxa which means a species. Okay. So it's there is a direct proportion between the lesion size and the periapical lesion size and number of the canal inside the root canal, number of the bacteria inside the root canal. A small lesion that is less than, which is less than five millimeter, might have, the canal might harbor about 12 taxa. A lesion which is about five and to less than 10 millimeter in diameter, the canal harbored 16 taxa. While if the lesion is more than 10 millimeter, the canal expected to harbor more than 20 species. Some canal associated with a very large lesion, they harbor even the more than four. Now you should know the valuable course that you have studied of microbiology. You have to know the microorganisms out there so you know how to deal with the cases of root canal or periapicalopsis. In root canal flora, the most dominant is the anaerobic bacteria, okay? Of which a restricted group is present in infected root canal. The gram-positive organism are there, so they are about 75%. The most predominant is the streptococci, staphylococci, and others. Yeast are there too. If the gram-negative bacteria, they are about 25%, including spirochetes, Neisseria, Bacteroid, Fusibacterium, and Pseudomonas, others too. The research have confirmed that the presence of the Tenilera is most common when there is endodontic infection including abscess. Physiobacterium has also been identified as the most common gram-negative organism with their five species like the fusiform, nucleatum, polymorphum and others. Even with all that type of bacteria present there are still 40 to 66 percent of these endodontic bacteria microorganism in a primary infection infection they are not cultivated yet in cases of symptomatic apical periodontitis and acute apical abscess the endodontic infection causing severe symptoms. In such cases, the infection is located inside the canal, but it has also reached to the periapical, periradicular tissue, and the abscessed cases can spread to other anatomical spaces, as shown in the figure. The microbiota involved in endodontic abscesses is mixed and dominated by anaerobic bacteria. As a direct comparison between the species, the taxa that are present in the abscess, which is about 12 to 18 per abscess, if I compare it with uh, the taxa that are present in the root canal of the tooth, in a symptomatic lesion inside the root canal, it's about 7 to 12 text. 
So even even though it's well established and so well known that these microorganisms, these are the causes of ep apical periodontitis, but there is no strong evidence that can sh that can clear or clarify or can relate the presence of certain organism to cause a special symptoms or sign in the apical periodontitis. Some gram-negative anaerobic bacteria have been suggested to be involved in symptomatic lesion, but that does not mean that these bacteria are not present in the asymptomatic lesion. So there are many factors that mirror the presence of an, a given putative pathogenic species that may play a role in etiology of symptomatic endodontic infection. These factors are difference in the virulence and ability among strain of the same species, the bacterial interaction result in additive and synergistic effect among the species in a mixed infection, and what is there inside the canal is a mixed infection. Number of the bacterial cell, the infectious load, the virulence of the bacteria, environmental cues regulating expression of virulence factor, host resistance, okay, the concomitant of the herpes virus infection, other factors, okay, can determine the occurrence or the intensity of the symptoms that the patient feels, okay. grow and multiply. The major ecological factor that determine the composition of the root canal microbiota, the presence of oxygen. Okay. That's why the type of the bacterial media in the corona portion of the canal is more mixed than the bacteria which are present in the apical portion of the infected root canal. Oxygen tension can really affect type of amount of av available nutrients is really affects the bacterial interaction. Three factors okay, determine the composition in the root canal the type of the bacteria that's present in the root canal. In general, whenever we go deeper to toward the periapical area, <coughs> the non-aerobic obligates, non-aerobic bacteria are present. One root canal infection is a dynamic process. It never stops. Okay? And it involves different types and species of bacteria. An initial phase, and that differs with the time. So, in initial phase, the purple infection process, you will find a facultative bacteria predominates. After a few days or weeks, oxygen will be debilitated inside the root canal. As a result of pulp necrosis and due to the consumption of this facultative bacteria. Further oxygen supply is interpreted with loss of blood circulation in the necrotic tissue. 
so the anaerobic bacteria will dominate and that is mostly can be seen the anaerobic bacteria i mean and the obligate anaerobic bacteria can be seen in the uh, apical third of the root canal anaerobic condition become more prominent okay when the time is passing the main source of the nutrients for the bacteria is the necrotic pulp tissue protein the glycoprotein also from the tissue fluid from the exudates that seep into the canal via the apical or the lateral foramen component of the saliva that enters the canal from the oral cavity product of the metabolism of other type of bacteria because of the larger largest amount of a nutrient is available in the main canal so the most volumized part of the canal is the most infected part and expected most of the species are present there bacterial species that can best utilize and compete for a nutrient in the root canal system will succeed to so as the time passes okay for the root canal infection even though the necrotic tissue can be regret as a finite source for nutrient for the bacteria the induction of the periapical inflammation will guarantee the source of the nutrient due to the presence of the protein and the guy and the glycoprotein in the exudate that will seep through the periapical foramen so this will guarantee the source of the nutrition in this stage the infectious process bacteria that have the protolytic capacity will establish to cooperative interaction with those that can utilize this substrate in the metabolism start to dominate therefore as the infectious process reaches the stage of induction the periradicular inflammation protein become the source of nutrition particularly the apical part of the canal favoring the establishment of the anaerobic species that utilize the peptides or amino acids for their metabolism now about the persistent or the secondary endodontic infection we said that the secondary endodontic infection is the infection that happens between the visits the root canal visits maybe due to the presence of of, um, of non-clean irrigants or non-proper uh, chemomechanical cleaning or due to presence of some uh, infected tools and so on so the persistence of some uh, intraradicular infection can be caused by microorganisms that are persist that are present in the intra inside the canal they resist the intra canal antimicrobial procedure and they survive in the treated canal even in the obturated canal okay these could be uh, microorganism could be a remnant of a primary or a secondary infection okay the secondary infection may be caused by as i said by microorganism they are entering the root canal during the treatment in between the appointments okay for for any circumstances if penetrating microorganism managed to adapt themselves to the new environment they will survive okay and they will flourish a secondary infection is established and species involved can be oral microorganism or not depending on the source of the secondary infection so bacteria at the root obturation stage again we will talk about the persist infection 
as I mentioned before, these type of bacteria, they are the bacteria that persist and refuse to be removed from the canal even after chemomechanical procedures and medications are used. So, some of the some of the pre apical periodontitis lesion heal even after bacteria were there. I mean, research was done that for a root, a successful root canal treatment were obturated, and even there was the end result was the healing of the bone surrounding the uh, the the previously infected root. Even they took cultures from those area if there was some residual bacteria. So the residual bacteria they may die after obturation because of the toxic effect of the filling material or a cilia. Okay? And and the absence of the nutrient and the, so there will be disruption of the bacteria. The residual bacteria may present in quantity or virulence, okay, that is weak enough to cause or sustain a periapical inflammation. The residual bacteria remain in locations sometime where the ac access to the, I mean, the root canal was successful to providing the apical seal, so bacteria remains in areas that, and that they have no access to the periapical tissue to cause infection. Okay, these are the type of the uh, residual bacteria present because they may die after obturation because of the toxic effect of the filling material. They may they may be present but with with less virulence and less amount. I mean in number and species or they may remain but in areas where they don't have any access to cause the extra radicular infection now we finished the intraradicular and we understood the primary the secondary and the persistent for the extra radicular infection it is characterized by microbial invasion of the inflamed peri periradicular tissue and is a sequelae of intraradicular infection. The extraradicular infection can be dependent or independent on the intraradicular infection. Either, yani, I mean, either it is an extraradicular infection that comes from an intraradicular infection or no. In most of the cases, the apical periodontitis inflammatory region succeed in preventing microorganisms from invading to the periradicular area. In some specific circumstances, the microorganism can overcome this defense mechanism and establish an extraradicular infection. The most common form of the extraradicular infection is acute apical abscess characterized by purulent inflammation in the periradicular tissue in response to the massive aggressive virulent bacteria from the root canal. Other form of extraradicular lesion, either by adherence of the apical external surface in a form of bioform structure, and by formation of cohesive actinomycotic colony within the body of the inflammatory region invade from outside. Anyhow, we have mentioned before that life of the pathogen is not easy. When they migrate or they leave the well-nourished oral cavity to inside a very tiny space closed space called the root canal and the and the coronal the pulp chamber okay so 
where they have to compete inside that limited space with many type of microbes. At the end, we have to understand that there are different type of microorganisms in the infection of the root canal, starting from the caries. The type of the caries outside the root canal is completely different with what is inside the root canal. Inside the root canal, they might be extraradicular or might be intraradicular. The intraradicular, it is caused by the necrotic necrosis of the pulp. The extraradicular could be due to some peri uh, periodontitis cases, bone resorption, and so on. For each one, there is a treatment. You have to understand that the type of the bacteria inside the root canal is a mixed type. And it varies, it is different, it is not the same, it is not the same type of the bacteria. Mostly the, uh, the obligate anaerobic are most predominant in the apical third, while in the coronal third, the mixed type is different. There is facultative anaerobic and and there are also positive microorganisms. You have to understand that with the time passes over this bacteria infecting the pulp, the type of bacteria varies. As the oxygen is a present, the type of the bacteria is completely different. They could be facultative. Okay, when the oxygen diminish, it due to the uh, to the less or due to the consumption of the bacteria they will be obligate type okay the mixed type of the bacteria at the beginning in the initial stage will be more will be completely different affected by the type of the nutrient present so time passing over the infection effects and the position the location of the effect also affects how the infection is is transferred to the pulp either through crack through traumatic exposure and through uh, attrition many other we have mentioned this how it spreads to the periapical area depend on the number of the virulent number of the bacteria and the species of the bacteria present and depend on the uh, human being the host defense mechanism these things you have to understand so you can treat you know now why we have to eradicate these type of bacteria to have a successful treatment and thank you